Angie Dick, I'm really going to need you to sit down. You know, I have this insomnia. However, before I go to bed, because I'm sleepy now, I'm going to talk about you. And I'm going to share a story that my friend from college told me and others about you. You are a horrible human being. And I believe the accusations. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. It's your girl, Michelle Little and I'm coming to you straight out of NYC on this, you know, quiet, early morning. It's 4.51 in New York. I have insomnia. I haven't been to sleep yet. I'm going to go to sleep as soon as I give you this content. So, Andy Dick, once again, is in trouble. According to Yahoo Entertainment News, it reads, Angie Dick arrested on suspicion of felony felony battery. Andy Dick is once again in legal trouble. Sheriff's deputies in California's Orange County arrested the comedian Wednesday at 9 a.m. on suspicion of felony sexual battery after a man alleged that Dick sexually assaulted him at the county's O'Neill Regional Park in Trabuco Canyon. The department tells Yahoo Entertainment that the alleged victim was taken to the hospital to be examined while the comedian was booked into the Orange County Jail. The arrest was captured on Captain Content's RV live stream on YouTube. Yahoo Entertainment has reached out to a rep had has reached out to a rep for Dick. As of Wednesday afternoon, the sheriff's department's website showed that Dick remained behind bars. His bail had been set at $25,000 and his next court appearance was set for Friday. The road trip actor, who has publicly struggled with addictions to drugs and alcohol, has faced legal trouble multiple times over the years, especially in the last few. In November, he was charged with felony domestic violence for allegedly hitting his boyfriend on the head with a liquor bottle. He was arrested five months earlier on suspicion of assault with a deadly with a deadly weapon after he threw a chair at a man. Dick was fired from the independent movie Raising Buchanan in October of 2017 after multiple people on the set accused him of misconduct, including sexual harassment. Two sources who were not the alleged victims told The Hollywood Reporter that Dick's unwanted behavior included propositioning at least four members of the production, kissing and licking people and grabbing people's genitals. At the the time, Dick said that he hadn't groped anyone, but that he might have done the licking and he did make sexual advances. Advances. My middle name is Miss Conta, he joked. They know what they signed up for. Um, no, they didn't know what they signed up for. They signed up for working on a set. They didn't sign up for being sexually harassed by a drunk Drug addict like yourself, Andy Dick. See, this is the problem that I have. And we're going to keep it real. Andy Dick has been getting away with his shenanigans for decades. Going back to the late 90s, okay? Andy Dick's rap sheet should have been got him locked up. But you know, he has the complexion for the protection and that is why Andrew Dick has not gone to jail. Because you see, if somebody had the complexion of, let's say, Wesley Snipes, they would have been locked up. See, we got to talk real stuff when it comes to people. We can't let a lot of this stuff, you know, go by. We, we got to talk about it because this right here is racism. And really segue it into the racism, yes, he himself is a racist, okay? Andrew Dick has been known for saying racist stuff on movie sets, on television shows, and definitely in his comedy acts and in person, okay? Um, His history of being in jail, he should have been in jail. First of all, a sexual battery should never happen. He hit his, he threw a chair at somebody and then he threw a bottle at his boyfriend's head. Really? Now, from my understanding, when somebody commits crimes like habitually through the years, um, aren't you supposed to basically give them like um one to two years in prison 
Like, what's really going on? Simple complexion for the protection. Okay? Now, I remember him on a show. He was on a show back in the day called News Radio. And it starred someone who I really liked as a comedic actor. And that's Phil Hartman. And it also starred Candy Alexander. And what occurred is that Phil Hartman was murdered. I believe it was during the third, I think it was during the third or fourth season. I'm not sure, but I know it was 98. And when that happened, the show did carry on for one more season. But without Phil Hartman, because it really was his vehicle. It was like his own show when he left SNL. It was never the same. And I remember some reading that someone felt that, and this is like people who worked on the show, that when that happened, Andy Dick all of a sudden became like a breakout star. And it was almost as if they really pushed Andy Dick to basically be in the place of Phil Hartman to fill the void. But with Andrew, Andy Dick, it was more of, okay, you know, he's not here no more. Not saying that he wished that to happen, but it was like, you know, he's not here. He's not here. It's my time to shine, which let's be real. A lot of entertainers, they do that. Okay. But and Andy Dick ends up getting his own show, but he never popped. He never became big. And with the combination of drugs and alcohol, it pretty much was a wreck. It it, it, it basically his um his fan base declined. He he his his you know star power declined. Now his legal issues is basically what troubles me. Going back to nineteen ninety nine. There was an actor, many people might remember him or many people might not remember him, but there was an actor on a show named, on a show called Suddenly Susan named David Strickland and David Strickland ended up passing away. Many people who knew David Strickland said that what was labeled as the cause of his passing was not the case many people believe that he was basically off if you know what I mean the last person to hang out with him that was known was Andy Dick and they basically went to the strip club they partied and all of a sudden he's over a ceiling beam okay and he's tied to it and he used bed sheets, and if you get my drift, okay? Another thing also is that they questioned him because they basically had him to basically come down, go down to the jail and basically question him because they wanted to know, you're the last person who was there. How does somebody get up at the height over a ceiling beam? It's very hard to do something like that by yourself. But they basically closed the case and Andy Dick moved on. But two months later, he drove his car into a utility pole in Hollywood. And then he was charged with possession of the cocaine, cannabis, um, drug paraphernalia, under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and a hit and run driving. Then he was the he completed an eighteen month diversion pro, drug diversion program, and the judge dismissed the felony and misdemeanor charges against him. That's the complexion for the protection. He was allowed to plead guilty. Then, five years later, he was arrested for indecent exposure after he exposed his buttocks at a local McDonald's. Then, in two thousand and eight, he was arrested on suspicion of drug possession and sexual battery. Because he exposed the breasts of a 17-year-old girl when he allegedly grabbed and pulled down her tank top in Bracier. And when they searched him, they found Xanax, cannabis, even though it was a small amount. And he didn't have prescription for the Xanax. He posted bail, $5,000 to be exact, 
and he pleaded guilty to the battery and marijuana possession. Now, this time he did get probation and he had to pay $7 in fines and he was ordered to wear an ankle and alcohol monitor bracelet for a year. I remember this. Then he got arrested again on charges of sexual abuse after reportedly groping a bartender and a patron. He was released from jail after pleading not guilty and posting $60,000. Now, this time he was formally indicted for two counts of first degree sexual abuse. He pleaded not guilty and what ended up happening, he was given, once again, a six-month pretrial diversion. And the assistant prosecutor said that the agreement stated that if Dick would stay out of legal trouble for six months, the criminal charges would be dismissed. And they was dismissed because he completed the diversion program. And what ended up happening was that he basically had a lawsuit filed against him by the victims. Then... The baby mother ordered him to stay away from at least, to stay away at least 10 yards from the children. So the baby mother, Lena Zev, had children by this man. Where was your mom? And the order still re remains in effect until March of next year. Now, I mentioned that he basically was, he groped the woman in April of 2018. And then he pleaded guilty to it. Because he basically ended up a year later grabbing an Uber driver by the genitals. And then last year, he got arrested for felony start with a deadly weapon because he basically threatened his fiance. No, no, no. He didn't threaten his fiance. What happened was the fiance stated that. Dick assaulted his lover, Lucas, with a metal chair, which could have killed him. It also said that it was just the worst week with him. And it was getting worse and worse and worse. Now, how you got a fiancé and you got a boyfriend? Okay, you know what? Andrew is a special one. So, I just basically read one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, actually, twelve. If you count the other one I read. So I'm. We're basically twelve minutes into this, and now I'm going to tell you the situation about the comedian who I went to school with, and me and her were very cool. My friend from college. She is a stand-up comedian. Well. I mean, we're not friends now. I mean, I don't even keep in touch with her. But in BMCC, me and her, we were really cool. And I'm happy that Yamanika made it. She has her own comedy tour. She does her thing on the comedy circuit. And she's, I'm really proud of her. And she has an IMDb page. So what happened was she met Andy Dick. Around about 20, late 2011, early 2012. And she had said to him, you know, I'm such a big fan of your work. And she was really, 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 you know, a fan. And what happened was she basically wanted to hug him and like, you know, like basically, you know, speak to him and so forth. Instead of him, you know, just saying, well, you know, I don't want to hug you. Or, you know, just being nice and polite. He basically said to her. Get the fuck out of my face. And then after that, he proceeded to tell. He basically calls her out her name. He calls her a black bitch. Then he went to the extreme to disrespect her some more. And she cursed him out. Now. She went live on her YouTube channel because she had a YouTube channel. I don't know if the video could fill up, but she basically went at his ass for good. And there was no need for him to do that. That was the dumb thing about it. You didn't have to say anything. You could have just said, oh, you know, great, nice to meet you. You touch everybody else. Look at the stuff you do. You are deplorable, Andy Dick. You are deplorable, Andy 
and you have the audacity to come out your mouth and be disrespectful, oh no, uh uh-uh, no, 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 no. So anyway, she was done with him, never said nothing about him. She was done. She ended up being a fan to being a person that hated him. Never spoke, never spoke kindly of him. If people would bring him up, she basically trashed him. But what happened? I want to go back to the actor David Strickland because something really just came up and it really just, you know, like struck a chord. I believe that Andy Dick is acting reckless the way he did since 1999 because the ghost of David Strickland is haunting him. If you look at the rap sheet, it started, his crimes and his runners with the law started two months after the passing of David Strickland. He knows something. He knows something. Or he could have been in on it because many people never bought into the offing that they basically were because you can't say the word. They never believed it. Close friends was like, no. Even people in the entertainment industry was like, no. And he was on a show called Suddenly Susan. And the last season, if you look at the filming, they couldn't even really film on the show because of the void that David left behind. They were very close, but also it never sat well with them that how this man basically ended up. And it's very interesting that both shows, Newsroom and Sonny Susan, were on NBC. And when you're working on the same lot, you know stuff. And I believe people talked and they started looking at Andy very, you know, suspicious. And next thing you know, he started having these problems. At the end of the day, when said, I believe that the man, and I always believed it, that something happened that was bigger than just a, you know, what I said. I believe that Andrew, Andy Dick knows a lot. He's not going to talk, but I think the drugs that he takes is a way to basically forget about what happened. And I also think, too, the way he acts out, the pouring people sexually, because he does it to women, men, and girls. He just lost it. And I don't feel bad for him. I basically just feel that he's a deplorable person. I think that he's racist outside of that. I think he's a racist. But getting back to the core of the situation, which is really him sexually abusing, a sexually assaulting that man, I believe it. And I'm going to tell you, this time, he's not going to get out of it. There's no way. Because now we're in the woke era, not just when it comes to, like, black people, um, other group, marginalized groups of people, but even with men being raped, oh, I said the word, sorry, with that, mm -mm -mm, they're not playing, and you're not in the 90s, you're not in the 2000s, you're not even in the 2010s, you're in the 2020s, and the world really hypersensitive, especially since we've gone into the pandemic. So I don't see Andy Dick getting out of this. With the rap, with the, the history he has, this is his 12th arrest. You're not going to get out of this one. And the man, I don't want to say he's lucky, but it could have gotten worse for that man. This man has committed attempted murder twice. This man is dangerous. He needs to go to jail. Basically to protect society and basically to keep him at arm's length. This man don't need to be out in the streets. This man needs psychotherapy. Those little BS diversion programs, it's just basically him going there to not go to jail. This man with this crime, he needs to go to jail for at least, in my opinion, 16 years.
because he ain't learned his lesson. And I would add another seven because he didn't learn his lesson. And with that being said, it's your girl, Miss Ann Little Court. I'm signing out. Thank you for listening to my content. Please hit the like button, share, subscribe if you haven't, and comment. I'm trying to beat the algorithm because I have less than 200 hours to be monetized. So please, 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 if you can, just play the video as much as possible. If you have any issue with it, just comment. And also I have other uploads that I'm really trying to get to at least 500. So please look at those. They're like the last 10 uploads. And thank you for supporting my channel. And I'll be back soon. I'm going to bed. Later.